Okay. So basically this would be the last uh, lesson for our subject no, sa ethics. Um, so kasi papasok dito yung tinatawag na praxis, no, yung uh, practice of the ethical theories that we have discussed. Uh, namely the utilitarian uh, utilitarianism natural law deontology or categorical imperative and lastly virtue ethics so why only four because these are the major ones na kinikilala talaga no, sa buong mundo actually and sa larangan pa lang ng politika na which we, i have um, recently uh, mentioned a while ago regarding the election sa larangan pa lang ng politika yung utilitarianism is actually uh, rampant among politicians even though these politicians do not know exactly what utilitarianism is and that's shocking no kasi kung minsan mag sasabihin mo na lang, ah, that's utilitarian thinking. Masasabi mo sa isang mayor, for example, and then he or she might ask you what is utilitarianism and then I hope you would be able to answer her or him. So, yun yung one um, major ethical theory. Uh, among Christians naman, not, not necessarily Roman, uh, Roman Catholic uh, people, but Christians in general, um, they know Thomas Aquinas and his version of natural law is actually, again, um, popular among these Christians. Um, especially if you're really religious and knowing Thomas Aquinas as, as, as a saint and one of the protectors of the Christian faith, think you would really love his uh, ethical theory no, which we have tackled already um if but however no if that is not fitting for you if utilitarianism and natural law are not sufficient for you or there seems to be something lacking about their ethical theories then we, we have um, deontology and virtue ethics. Deontology was originally um, formulated in response to the natural law. Kasi sabi ni Kant, uh, we must base our morality. Hindi siya, hindi siya atheist, no, si Kant. Uh, we're not sure actually if he's, if he's, if he's agnostic or theist, no, 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 he believes in different kinds of beings. So he believes in natural, uh, supernatural beings, no, kaya ang tawag niya dun, beings, hindi individual or, or person or human beings, beings ang tawag niya sa lahat ng nakakapag-isip. Sabi niya pa kasi may, may possibility na may mga supernatural uh, beings na nag exist ano, outside the earth. And that's why uh, siguro medyo naniniwala siya sa supreme being. And that's why nung nalaman niya yung kay, yung kay uh, Thomas Aquinas, uh, nakulangan siya. That's why he formulated categorical imperative or deontology. Kasi sa deontology, he says... Um, morality should be based on reason alone and not on faith. So, remove natin yung religion um, aspect. Let's have a pure reason-based ethical theory which he made into categorical imperative. And then we have, lastly, Aristotle no, in virtue ethics which I hope you, you are done by now, reading the virtue ethics. Medyo mahaba-haba yun, but uh, I hope tapos nyo nang basahin yun. Um, very informative and outlineable actually. Lahat sila, no? outlineable yung binigay kong uh, modules. But uh, the last one is actually the most interesting among the, the, among the four because it does not really, you know, 
start from scratch or from cold turkey. Kasi ang sinasabi ni Aristotle, uh, whatever you are doing right now as a habit, kung ano man yung ginagawa mo, for example, you are always, ever since you have been an, an honest person, that already is a habit of you. And therefore, if it is, if it is a habit, it is already your moral character. Kung baka kilala ka na sa pagiging anes. Um, yun yung sinasabi niyang pag meron kang nabanggit na tao at nakilala mo siya sa kanyang karakter or kanyang moral. That is actually virtue ethics. Kasi nga pinapractice niya kadalasan or everyday. Um, parang kung baga... Uh, Pinaka-common no, sa, sa atin yung phrase na, ah, si boss, ganito, ah, mabait yan. Di ba? Mabait. Yun yung palaging character na ano natin eh, uh, description sa isang taong naging mabuti sa atin. Mabait siya. So much so na kapag may nanira sa kanya, sasabihin mo, parang hindi naman totoo. Which is true in some way. Kasi nga, naging mabuti siya sa iyo, no? So, ganun yung span ng virtue ethics na ni Aristotle. No? It comes with the moral development, the moral character of a person. So much so that it becomes a trademark of that person. So now, let's come with the ethical case analysis. So, ano nga bang ethical case analysis? Describe ko lang ito and then let's go straight to the seven steps, no? Kasi na-discuss ko dun sa in-upload kong recorded discussion or disc uh, recorded lecture yung ibang bahagi nitong intro. But uh, to have a clarification, discuss natin itong part na to. So what is ethical case analysis? Um, actually basic. No? Ba Napaka-basic kasi we all we only discuss four ethical theories. No? Hindi natin discuss yung medyo critical part yung mga criticisms against, against these uh, theories actually um, malawak pa but um, uh, for you as a devcom uh, major and for your future uh, professions in media no lahat naman siguro mapupunta sa media which is in a sense your professional ethics would come with uh, um, protecting the truth and spreading the truth. So, ang ethics ni dyan would be avoiding fake news, you know, avoiding spreading of false information, as well as um, yung bang uh, pinipigilan yung pagkalat no, ng, ng tiyatawag na fake news or false information. And kalakip nun is to have people inform um, with facts and truth and the truth. So ethical case analysis is a common exercise for identifying and reasoning about ethical challenges in complex situations. So it is a systematic approach in figuring out the right moral decision in a particular situation. So by analyzing the situation logically in accordance with your ethical code, you can figure out what, what which options are both effective and moral. So adult naman tayo lahat, no? you can make your decisions on your own. Kahit na sabihin natin dependent ka pa rin sa parents mo ngayon kasi pinapakain ka nila nag kanila. Pero when it comes to decision-making in face of ethical, moral uh, situations, you can do your own decisions on your own. So, yung ethical code na tinatawag dito would be your future uh, professional code, actually. Kasi uh, a large percent of your life when you become a professional would be given to your work or job. Imagine kasi five days a week, um, eight, uh, normally lang naman, normally, no? 
sa, sa government kasi five days a week, uh, eight hours a day ang inilalaan namin sa trabaho. And dahil nasa academy kami, more than eight hours pa nga. Uh, katulad ko sa sa IP, uh, IP office, intellectual property office ng TAU, I spend more than eight hours. Kahit before going to bed, nag-work ako dahil dun sa mga um, IP policies and technology transfer protocols and uh, searching for patent um, information kasi may mga nagsasubmit. Um, so in a sense, no, in other words, yung, yung, yung trabaho would be most of your life would be given to tra- to your work. So, mahalaga yung ethical case analysis whenever you encounter these situations which call for your ethical decision. Excluding pa yan yung tiyatawag na sexual harassment on both the female and the male kasi yung pati lalaki na nakaharas din. No? Yun nga lang, mas marami kasi nare-report na sexual harassment against women kasi nga yung mga lalaki na haras minsan nahihiya. Uh, actually, na ilabas yun sa isang study. Anyway, so its principles also encourage you to form an accurate picture of the situation and think through the effect of your decisions before you act. So, ano nga ba yung situations na pinag-uusapan natin dito? No? Ano nga ba yung picture, an accurate picture of the situation na pinag-uusapan natin dito? Well, these are called the ethical moral dilemmas. And ethical moral dilemmas are situations in which conflicts between, mostly, mostly lang naman, uh, sometimes it can go over more than uh, two choices, uh, but um, mostly between two choices. So for instance, uh, an example here, a mother who has the sole responsibility of feeding her children but is unemployed has the tendency to commit theft or knockout. In other words, the moral agent is faced with the difficulty of making a moral decision between stealing or letting your children go hungry, which could even lead to death. So yung moral dilemma dito sa isang babae, um, nanay na unemployed para mapakain niya yung kanyang nagugutom na anak, mga anak rather no kasi children ay when opportunity comes, there's the temptation for her to steal food. Kaya nga katulasan pag ini-interview ang mga magnanakaw ng pagkain or kaya magnanakaw ng pera no kasi pera na yun. Uh, malaking porsyente doon is para sa pagkain, right? And pag tatanungin sila, uh, kailangan lang po sir, kaya um, kailangan lang para sa pang, ha- pang araw-araw na pagkain or what not. And that's actually a simple, no? And yet, yung, simple, yung itong, itong example na ito napaka-simple, pero parang applicable siya in all situations especially here in the Philippines no yung being torn between two choices no? parang torn between two lovers pero yung choices tayo dito na no? choices and ano yung pipiliin ng mother dito basically ang pipiliin niya is the lesser evil no to steal Kasi mas, mas grabe yung haayaan niyang magutom yung anak niya. May namamatay kasi sa hunger, no? yung tinatawag na starvation. And mostly mga tao namamatay sa starvation are Africans no? sa Africa. Kasi nga sobrang layo ng, ng kanilang access sa food. No? Ang problema naman sa Pilipinas kasi marami tayong access sa food, ang daming nagbebenta ng pagkain. Ang problema naman, walang pambili. So, sa, sa Africa, ang problema doon, transportation, access to food, bukod pa doon, problema din sa affordability, yung uh, purchasing power ng individual. That's why maraming nag-starve doon. 
So the lesser evil for the mother to do would be to steal because she does not do harm. Wala naman nasasaktan. Except, ano nga bang stealing? Getting someone's property. Uh, naalala ko, and I think na-mention ko nito sa kabilang recorded, this, uh, recorded lecture, yung binalita na may nagnakaw ng isang dilata na pagkain. Uh, I'm not sure kung anong dilata yun. Basta isa lang dilata na yun. Tapos nakulong pa siya no, ng ilang araw ata. Dahil yung owner, eh, nagsam... Um, tinuloy no yung yung kaso sa kanya. And which is saddening kasi ang reason naman niya is walang pangkain yung pamilya niya. So, in lang napakaliit lang na <laughs> isang isang bagay na can good. And yet uh, hindi niya na lang pinalipas. So kaya yung may-ari siguro sabi na lang sana niya utang na lang. Pero hindi niya ginawa 'yon no. Nonetheless, it's his store. Okay, so yun, yun ang ethical moral dilemma. So these are actually complicated challenges, uh, very easy to discuss, no? itong, itong paraan natin. Pero when you, when you are the one who is torn between two cho choices, especially when, you are, when the temptation is high, and especially when there's no witness, which I, which is, I always mention to you, no? uh, even before the introduction to like, to ethics natin na banggit ko na ito. Yung what if opportunity comes na merong lumabas sa harap mo na may lumatag na uh, maleta na naglalaman ng isang milyong piso so lang babantay. Would you steal it? No, madaling sabihin na hindi. Pero kapag ikaw na nangailangan sa time na yon nasa hospital lang peres mo, for example, no? pero ito ka man, no? pero let's say, ganun yung situation, would you steal it? Knowing na walang nakakita, walang nakakasaksi, hindi mo lang kung kanina yung pera, would you steal the 1 million peso? So, yun yung moral dilemma, no, na ano yung lesser evil doon, haya mo mamatay yung parents mo, habang nasa hospital sila, or kukunin mo na lang yung uh, maleta magnanakaw pa nila which is the lesser evil but so in the inconclusive no inconclusive wala akong sinasuggest na action pero it's up to you um but i do hope you do you know your options very well and you know how to make your decision sabi nga ni Kant sa kanyang categorical imperative kung si Kant kung si Kant ang pag-uusapan dito sabi niya no, you should not steal it. Kahit walang uh, nakakita, walang saksi. Kasi nga, um, stealing is bad. And if you imagine all other people doing it, then the, the living a life where everybody steals someone's property would be illogical. No? Kasi walang sense of ownership na. Lahat na lang pwedeng magnakaw. Lahat na lang kung sinong pwedeng magnakaw, magnanakaw. Pero ang sabihin ni Mil dyan, utilitarian, kung ang pera is gagamitin naman for the most uh, number of people, for the benefit of the most number of people, then you should steal it. No? Hence, the fictional character of Robin Hood. Si Robin Hood kasi nagnanakaw siya para matulungan yung mga may hirap. And yet, nagnanakaw pa rin siya. Pero yung result happiness is good. So for utilitarianism in in that ethical theory, um, what Robin Hood does is actually ethical. So nakakatawang isipin na contrasting yung mga ethical theories na, na discuss natin. But I, I hope uh, in every situation you should be able to distinguish which uh, among these four major ethical theories are applicable to your situation. All right, so ito, um, let's go straight forward to the, ito na discuss ko to sa recorded discussion, you can uh, go over that later on. Um, yung, la, this, um, yung submission, ng, uh, yung turn in ng ating uh, 
recorded discussion will be on Friday, 11.59 p.m. So I hope by 11.59 p.m. all I have already watched or viewed the recorded discussion. So Scott Ray's model for moral reasoning presents a seven-step approach to moral analysis and evaluation. So it is oriented towards virtues and principles with consideration of consequences as a supporting role. So this model is free from cultural, ethnic, and religious background and biases though it is consistent or uses biblical principles. With that, let us take a look at the seven steps. Principles lang no, ginamit. Pero nonetheless, uh, Scott Ray made this uh, seven-step approach as uh, free from biases as possible. Kwan lang siya. Consistent lang siya. It so happened na naging consistent lang siya sa biblical principles. Like protecting the truth. First, we have to gather facts, according to Scott Ray. So, in every situation, may facts pa rin yan. No? In every situation that you are in, for example, um, meron kang kaibigan na um, teenage pregnant, you have to gather the facts first. So, ano ibig sabihin nun? Wala mo ng reaction. Gather lang naman ng facts eh. No, ang mahirap kasi sa Pilipino, mag-judge ka agad. Bakit ganyan ang nangyari? Ano bang sabi ko sa iyo? Ang <laughs> dami nang sinabi, no? sasabi lang naman yung, yung kaibigan mo ng problema, ang dami mo ng reaction. Yun yung mahirap, no? yung reactive ka. Ang ibig lang lang sabihin dito sa gathering of facts, you just gather facts. That's all. You don't need to react. So ano ibig sabihin? O ano nangyari? Kunyari may nagsabi sa iyo, ah, uh, Mare, no? kasi babae siya. Kunyari, mare, uh, nabuntis ako. So, teenage pregnant na siya. Tapos yun yung gustong magpa-abort, for example, kasi iniwan ng boyfriend, what not. So, what? So, what not? Or ganon. So, gathering of facts would mean just ask questions that don't require reaction. So, ano nangyari? Ikwento mo lahat. Anong gusto mong sabi, gusto mo ba ng advice ko? Actually, ang sinasabi ko dyan, pagbabae ang lumapit sa akin. Usually kasi pagbabae ang lumapit sa iyo. Sometimes they just want to be heard. Tama, tama ba? Can you confirm yung babae dito? Sometimes you just want to be heard. And that's why I always ask whenever women come to me, I always ask, do you want my advice or do you just want me to listen? Yun ang una kong sinasabi pag lumalapit sa lahat may problema. And usually, sabihin lang, I will just want you to listen. And that's already... Eh, tapos na tayo dito, wala lang gathering of facts kung gusto lang nilang, kung gusto lang nilang makin... Kung gusto, mo, gusto lang nilang marinig sila. No? But uh, in some cases, pag sinabing, I want your advice or what not, gather the facts gather the facts. So, ano nangyari? Ano bang balak mo? Bakit gusto mong magpa-abort? Uh, anong sabi ng parents mo, for example? Or uh, what's your religious stance? Kasi mahalaga din yun. Kung, kung siya ay, ano nga bang religious group yun? Kapag ikaw nalaman ng, ng church na nagpa-abort ka, is matatanggal ka. No? Excommunicado. Um, anyway, so, ganun, no? gathering of facts would be the first one. So, in order to know the situation, either it involves a moral dilemma or an ethical issue, for dealing with it, we must ask basic questions to gather information. Questions such as who, what, where, when, how, and why are imperatives in gathering facts about something. Again, gathering of facts lang. You don't need to react. No? Mahalaga yun. Kasi kapag ikaw naging reactive, Baano pa siya lalapit sa'yo kung ikaw hindi mo na kaya? Ang tao kasing reactive, ibig sabihin, hindi niya kaya yung problema na i-bear. No? Mas maganda kasi yung non-reactive ka, at least you, you are will, first of all, you are willing to listen. And second of all, you can bear whatever burden your friend has. Kasi nga, hindi ka natitrigger, hindi natitrigger yung emotions mo. No? Kasi kung madaling matrigger yung emotions mo, ang may feel niya ng, ng kaibigan niyo mo would be 
ah, hindi niya kaya itong bibigay kong problem. So, don't react. Just gather facts. Second, determine the ethical issues. So, there are at least four major ethical theories, no? utilitarianism, natural law, deontology, and virtue ethics, so which can cover most of the common ethical issues. So, among the issues could be bioethical in nature, which basically means issues concerning human life. So, in bioethics, there are three categories actually. No? Beginning of life issues, uh, kasama dyan yung, yung abortion. Sustenance of life issues, yung mga brain uh, yung mga brain dead pero yung puso ay nagbibit pa din so good as dead kasi hindi sila hindi sila nakakapagsalita na sa hospital bedridden lang uh, may ethical issues doon no uh, actually this 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 part of bioethics would be the concern of doctors no meron silang um, ethical code when it comes to this bioethics so, in sustenance of life, would you, are you willing to see your mother brain dead, just breathing and not being able to talk to you in a human way or any other way? Kasi nga, naka-bedridden lang siya, kumakain lang siya ng fluid food or liquidized food. Uh, ethical issue doon would be would you want to prolong the agony? Kasi masakit yan eh, yung ano, yung tubing. Nakayin mo tayo yung pattern. Ito yung tube na ginagawa para makakain yung yung taong hindi makagalaw. And end of life issues would be death penalty, for for example, or uh, rather, um, end of life issues, uh, yeah, that penalty, end of life issues. Yung beginning of life issues would be abortion kasi before conceiving the, the child, you are already killing it. No? So beginning of life issues yung abortion. End of life would be that penalty. Um, so in the first one, there is the common issue on abortion. The second one covers organ transpl uh, transplantation and the like. Kasama yung organ transplant of yung puso. Minsan, ayun yun yung atang isang nakapag successfully, no, successfully transplanted a heart of a pig. Pig ba yun? Nakamutan ko kung anong hayop yun. Um, naging successful. Nung, uh, ilang weeks, ewan ko kung anong balita ngayon. Pero ang issue doon was, was nabigyan siya ng second life. No, because of an organ of an animal. So, paano naging ethical issue yun? Ethical issue yun kasi it's like you're playing with death. No, we are playing with death. It's supposed to be, wala ka ng buhay, pero gusto mo pa rin mo buhay. Alam, um, mas magiging issue pa siya kung yung animal, uh, kung yung mga animal rights advocates ay na, nakabil, uh, kabilang sa, sa usapin na ganun. No? Kasi getting the heart of an animal is actually unethical for that animal. Lalo kung buhay yung animal, no? hindi yung may sakit siya o kaya yung uh, what not. Pero I think healthy naman yung pinagkuhanan nila ng, ano, ng puso ng baboy. I'm not sure if baboy yun, basta animal siya. So that's also a, an organ transplant plantation. No, you are pro prolonging or sustaining life which should have been ended. Parang kumbaga dinadaya mo yung buhay. Yun yung parang ethical issue doon. No? Well, the third consists of issues concerning euthanasia uh, and brain death in persistent vegetative state. Um, yung euthanasia would be mercy killing. No? Uh, killing the patient who is bedridden cannot really function as a human person um so you kill him or her nasa doctor yun actually kung kung may, may option and so far as uh, the doctor is concerned ang mabibigay niya lang is there's an option of euthanasia or none pero yung immediate 
uh, family relatives ng patient will be sila pa rin yung magde-decide kung magpupush through with euthanasia or mercy killing. So in order to identify the ethical issue, we must ask the basic question of what could harm the other and to whom are you doing it for? So there may be multiple ethical issues surrounding one case. As such, you must identify one major ethical issue at a time. So for example, balikan natin yung ano, ano natin yung case analysis natin no yung a pregnant uh, a teenage pregnant who is planning to have an abortion. So ano yung major major ethical issue doon would be the beginning of life issue is yung killing the the innocent child before it is being conceived. Um yun yung unang major ethical issue. What can there be? You know, ano pang, what other multiple ethical issues can there be surrounding the case of a teenage pregnant? Pag inayaan niyang mabuhay yung anak niya, um, pag he push, if she and the, the father, the child, push through, with the birth, no? um, and the ethical issue don would be forcing the child to live a difficult life, perhaps, no? Kasi kung, kung ang, ang nana is unemployed, may well, teenage nga, eh, no? mag-aaral pa, ay yung tatay, eh, nag-aaral pa lang din, mahihirapan yung parents na mag-finance, no? And... That's why mahalaga pa rin yung always have work muna before having child. Uh, and actually, take care of yourself first before having a child. Kasi kung hindi mo, kaya, hindi mo kayang alagaan yung sarili mo, how would you expect, how would you expect to, to take care of another being kung sarili mo hindi mo kayang alagaan? So yun yung other ethical issues which are minor but uh, necessary to, to note. So yung um, another ethical issue would be you know, if you push through with the birth, um, the, the child may live a difficult life. Baka umantong pa sa ano yung sadly, no? yung, yung bang maninirahan na lang sa kalsada sa sobrang bankrap ng, ng kanilang pamilya. No? Uh, yun yung pasaklap na mangyari. So after having identified the facts and overall context of the moral situation, the ethical issues involved in the situation must be clearly stated in order to specify what issues one has to make a decision to. So abortion, pinakamahalagang ethical issue doon is ending an innocent child's life. So this section must like the I likewise clearly state the major me moral dilemma involved in the case. Okay. Third, identify the virtues or principles that have a bearing on the case, the virtue of life when it comes to abortion. Gaano ba kahalaga yung buhay? Napakahalaga no, napakahalaga without life we would not be having this discussion. Without life, you will not be able to attend my class. And without life, you will not be able to be a student of the EU. Or in other words, without life, you will not be able to experience what you are experiencing uh, up until now. So universal principles such as right to life, so security to privacy, among others, are imperatives for the human being to live well. Thus, identifying the surrounding principles of a certain case is a must in ethical decision making. So, applicable ethical values and principles relevant to the case must be identified and briefly explained in order to justify how such principles could be used in coming up with a decision concerning the moral dilemma later on. So, in addition, the sources of these principles must be acknowledged likewise. These values, principles could come from, first, established philosophical ethical principles, 
Second, social cultural norms. Third, social political norms and laws. And lastly, religious traditions and others. So, for example, sa religious tradition pa lang, no, sa, when it comes to Christianity, um, against talaga ang, ang church, no, Roman Catholic to be specific, against abortion. They don't really allow it. Ang suggestion pa nga ng, ng ilang paris to let the child live in a chari, charity or in a convent, sa isang convento. Um, yun na lang yung pinaka-possible option mo bukod sa having an abortion is to push through with the birth uh, and let the child live in a charity home. So, yun. In ethical dilemma, certain values and principles are central to the compete, competing positions. So, identify these. Determine if some should be given more weight than others. Ask what the core source of the principle is. Is it, con is it by constitution, culture, natural law, religious tradition? And this supplement uh, prin based biblical principles. You know, the right to life is actually a basic biblical principle. Um, thou shalt not kill others. <laughs> And I think hindi, sa ibang, ano, sa ibang religion, may translation yun. Hindi nga lang ganun yung uh, wordings. Uh, and fourth, we have to list the alternatives. Ano ba yung alternatives na pwede? Yung nabangit ko kanina, yung, yung when, when a teenage pregnant woman comes to you, another alternative besides having the abortion would be for her to let the child just live in a charity house or home or to 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 let some married couple who are not able to bear a child due to health problems have adopt uh, have them adopt the child papa adopt na lang sa ibang parents na no? sa ibang uh, married couple na sinusubukan magkaroon ng baby pero hindi kaya, pwedeng alternative yon So, we have two. We have two alternatives. Ano pa bang pwedeng alternative doon? Can you think of another alternative when it comes to a teenage pregnant? Anong masasabi mo sa isang teenage pregnant when when she asks for your advice or for, for your pieces of advice? So, we have first to... Do, mahirap. Ayaw ko kasi gamitin yung donate na word, no? Uh, to give no to give the, the child to to sisters no in sa convento o kaya sa charity home uh, ah yun, yun yung una and second would be to to give to let married couple who who are not able to to bear or to produce a child um, to let them adopt that teenage pregnant pregnant a woman's child papa adapt na lang nila ano pa ano pa bang pwedeng alternative para maiwasan yung abortion anyone ano yun sir oh tinayan <clears throat> hindi niya ba nasusundan yung discussion yung alternative sa uh, gagawin ng isang teenage pregnant woman so we have mentioned first giving the child or the soon to be child rather no to a charity second to to let a married couple who are not able to produce or to bear a child uh, adopt the child the child of the, the teenage pregnant woman uh, what else could be the alternatives of the woman para maiwasan yung abortion? Yan ba ba? Sige, pag-isipan nyo muna. Then let's go with the 
fifth one, no? So, yung, basically, yung list alternatives would be para maiwasan lang yung unethical action. So, in this case, yung abortion, no? Uh, which is already considered to be unethical. No? Uh, kahit ano talagang laban mo, it's unethical, eh. Kasi, first of all, pag sinabi mong unwanted pregnancy, hindi rin naman kasalanan nung magiging anak mo na nagkaroon ka ng unwanted pregnancy. So that's that seems to be fair na itutuloy na lang yung birth. So kung napanganak na yung bata, ano yung alternatives nung teenage woman? What else? So basically the list the, this fourth uh, step would be to list the all possible alternatives para lang maiwasan yung ethical action. Fifth, uh, compare the alternatives with the virtues or principles. So the initial list of suggested course of actions must then be evaluated from the vantage point of identified ethical values and principles. So this step eliminates alternatives as they are weighed by the moral principles which have a bearing on the case. Potentially, the issues will be resolved here as all alternatives except one are eliminated. Here, you must satisfy all the relevant virtues and values. So at least to some of the alternatives will be eliminated. So let's look at the alternatives that we have. First, uh, to send the child to a charity house. Or second, to let a married couple adopt the child. No? Uh, kung ipapa ampon no, sa Tagalog yung bata o kaya ipapa migay sa isang charity house. So ano nga ba yung mas mahalaga dito? Actually, personal lang sagot yan. Eh, no? Napaka personal na sagot. Pero pag kayo yung tatanungin, ano yung mas maiging action doon? To, to send the child to a charity house or to to let the married couple no, adopt the child. Eh, paampun na lang sa isang married couple na wala pang anak. In other words, let's look at the consequences muna. No? Consequence dun sa una, sending the child, the unborn child yet, no, the, the child rather, to the charity would be um Whenever you want to, you can visit we you can visit him or her. Pero yun nga lang, you are not obliged to be with him or her kasi nga pinamigay mo na. The same way sa sa married couple pag inampon kasi adopted child legally no sa sa parents siya uh, obliged to answer or to to be with yung parents na uh, na nag-ampon sa kanya. O mas restricting yung yung second alternative as opposed to the first one. And ano nga ba yung kalakit na virtues dito? Unang-una, virtue to life. No? Napaka-basic yung dalawang yan. Siyempre, ang huwubuhay naman silang dalawa. Pero yung problem din kasi doon sa pangalawa, for example, hindi mo kilala yung parents o yung married couple then later on, naka-issue pala na no, meron palang violence sa family. For example lang. So, mas mahihirapan ka na tanggapin yung second one. So, do you agree? Do you agree ba yun? Na mas maganda yung alternative one, which is to send the child to a charity. Because then, you, you, you will be able to visit him or her. Uh, we already did the six. No? <laughs> Kinosider na natin yung consequences actually. Yun na yung consequences niya. Pag, mo, pag pin-adapt mo sa married couple, uh, restricting, napaka-restricting ng visitation. Uh, depende pa yan sa married couple kung papabisitahin ka. Kasi kung ikaw ang nanay, syempre, meron kang urge to, to look for your child, no? Uh, kung hindi man ngayon, in the future. Kaya nga nauso sa Jessica Soho yung, ano, yung 
or parents find for parents searching na uso doon kasi nga the child will always come back to the original parents to the original biological parents yung consequences and seven of course lastly is to make decision including one's justification for the decision so after having analyzed the moral dilemma situation from steps one to through six one must know one must now make a decision based on what has been previously discussed and must clearly justify the decision that has been made so ethical decisions rarely have pain-free solutions. It might be that you have to choose the solution with the least number of problems or painful consequences. But meron pa rin problema. You know? At least lesser lang. Lesser lang yung number of problems. Because again, it's a moral dilemma. And a moral dilemma always has uh, complications and problems and consequences, of course. Uh, such is the sense of basic basic ethical case analysis and uh, the one we have right now yung ab when it comes to abortion ang applicable dito would be the natural law ni Aquinas everyone has the right to, to life and aborting one's child is unnatural ang natural thing to do is to, to let the um, child be born naturally and any action that intervenes with the bearing of the child, with the giving of birth of the mother, is unnatural and therefore unethical. So, ganun. No, ganun yung application lang. Napaka pan lang. Um, medyo mahaba-haba. Medyo mahaba-haba. Pero, uh, kung tutusin, madali lang. No? Madali lang siya. So, ito, kuha nyo na ito, um, activity na ito, no? uh, a guide for your activity, you can read that on your own, uh, ito naman sa academe, para maiba tayo, binigay ko yung example kanina ng abortion, ngayon naman, when it comes to cheating, no? cheating or meron kasing moral dilemma yung estudyante dito, si uh, John, um, or Mark ano ba yung pangalan dito but anyway uh, one person lang yan and uh, another teacher no, si Sir Calazan um, do you have questions so far? Question. Wala naman sir, pero sir may tanong na ako sir sa kabuan mm. ng subject po natin. Mm. Sir, mm. may papa-final activity po ba kayo sa amin?